Hello, welcome to Tea in the Garden. Today's topics, uh, former gifted child syndrome and the birth, life, and death of businesses that naturally occur Mm. alongside the birth, life, and death of versions of ourselves. Welcome. I feel like those go together so well. Right, because it's like you, as a former gifted child, you literally cannot handle failure. Mm -hmm. Well, but as we're going to be talking about with the the birth, life, and death of our past businesses, like, hopefully, I feel like we all have taken on a lot of that wisdom of, like, their cycles. We're not, like we were just saying, we're not always going to be ultra productive. Like, that's an unrealistic goal or expectation, but being a former gifted child one who is naturally good at everything immediately, when that shit doesn't happen the way you want it to, it can feel soul crushing, right? Also neurospicy ADHD woman here. So I think like we have that hypersensitivity to if it's not perfect or if we're not always performing or if we're not always the best at everything, then then that's the problem when really I think it's a mindset yeah. shift that needs to occur. I would love to hear from you, P, like a little bit of your supreme elite status as gifted child history. (laughs) Exposing you immediately. Uh, What Savannah is referring to is my my bio data (laughs) was pretty crazy. You know, I had never gotten a B until senior year of high school. I've never gotten a B in my entire life. Um, and I got my first B in BC calculus. Oh my and, God. What? And I got an 89. <laughs> I got an 89.9 something. Which and now the, in today's standards would be an A. And the teacher, the, standards. the teacher did not like me, and which is which is rare, by the way, <laughs> of course. But she would not; she was not gonna round for me, and I was so pissed. I'm so butthurt about it to this day. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and yeah, I was, I was top twenty of my graduating class, and I had a like almost a five point or I did have a five point trying to remember. I was in student council and I was the vice president of the school. I was first publicity, then I was vice president. I started I started the humanitarian club. I co-founded the humanitarian club. I was a part of a another educational club and the National Honor Society. I tutored other students and I had a job. I played volleyball for two of the years and then I went full time into all the extracurriculars and work, but yeah, I was crazy. <laughs> I was a crazy little kid and a super high achiever in every way possible. And that was like my really entire identity, honestly, was my, like my intellect, you know, like that was my, my identity. It was what I felt I was good at. It was what i thought was like my my value you know and all of these things so it was an interesting mix because and I think we all relate on this front and it'll be interesting to hear what people listening also like connect with that when you're a super intellectual person but then you're also really emotional it can it can be such an interesting existence you know because it's like you're in this world of academia and logic, right? But you're also an extremely sensitive person and you're extremely emotionally driven and connected to the world. So it's like, I always felt like I didn't fit, like, you know, anywhere that I was, I I didn't, I didn't fit in those spheres. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. yeah, that was my little bit on my, my gifted child uh, upbringing. So now you're 10, 11 years later, when did you graduate? 2013? Yeah, 2014. 2014? 10 years later. How is that 30. translating to be a 
into, how is that translating as a multiple six figure entrepreneur? What are you deconstructing? How do you still see it coming up? Yeah. Love that question. And maybe um, even what are the gifts? What are the gifts of it? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about that when you guys first opened up, like the pros to that in our lives, we clearly see the benefits, right? Of this really intense drive we, we have always had that does push us to create pretty incredible things and uh, things that are out of the ordinary and that many people maybe just wouldn't even have the like the courage maybe to do or risk mm -hmm. to to create and achieve right and i think that's one of the really strong suits of our dispositions for sure we are dreamers right we're idealists i very much relate to that that and i've always had that quality inside of myself of like a visionary and so when i I would say really my first breaking the out of the box and starting to go create what it meant for me, what it what it looked like for me was when I was 18. So I was still fairly young, right? It, it happened pretty, pretty early for me. I felt this really deep call to get out into the world, to start making an impact. And I did not want to do more school. I, I was, I was, so academic right which is really interesting but i wasn't just i, I didn't want to just keep doing school because i already saw the futility in some ways in it like i want to be in the world i want to see what really life is like and what other people are experiencing because i'm in such a bubble i felt I was like i was in such a bubble and i felt so trapped in that so when i moved to ecuador and i decided to take a gap year instead of going directly to college that was the biggest i think breakthrough for me of I'm going to do something different. Oh my God, how scary. Like I'm not going to all the Ivy leagues that like everyone expects me to go to right now. And I'm not getting into STEM and like doing all these things that people are recommending me to do because I have these dispositions and, and these, these gifts. And I went off mm -hmm. and I did a, you know, a whole year of service. And I feel like that really catapulted me into a confidence in my decision, in my own decision-making process. And my creation process. So in my businesses over these years, since then I have never worked for someone else, at least not directly. Like I have had <laughs> little, little, like, you know, I'm nannying, but I still feel I have the power. I make my own schedule. I don't want to go if I don't go, you know, all these things, but I did not have an actual boss at any point. And that was a huge win for me and very important for me because I needed that. Honestly, I feel like I would die if I was in <laughs> like a corporate environment. I, Same. I don't know. I feel like I would just melt Couldn't. completely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I started my businesses, my first, my first company I started was Ananda Ayurveda. I started that in 2020 with my ex partner. And I think, I think it's that important to mention before that, you're an ashramite. Like, oh, what were you doing in all that time? The Peace Corps and living in an ashram in India. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow, well, sorry. This is turning into, like, my whole timeline. But then we're going to go to your guys. It's okay. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, after Ecuador. No, not I me today. No. Mm -mm. Came back no, to not telling that whole story today. No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We want to talk about more No way. That would take way too long. Uh -uh. Different, we have such different backgrounds, hey, though. This like, is, Priscilla this is in no. It's cliff notes though. And it's so relevant <laughs> to what we're talking about. Right. So we can like tie it in. Right. So we have like, we have a like humanitarian, a veteran and someone who went into the corporate STEM, STEM mm -hmm. yeah. uh, military defense contractor world. Crazy. Yeah. We have to definitely have to touch on all those things for sure, because it's so important to, yeah, like what we're doing and who we are. Right. So I went to Ecuador for a year. I was a volunteer, opened my mind, my heart, my spiritual path. I came home. I went to U USC in Los Angeles for getting a degree in nonprofit work. There was actually a major there for that. So I came back to study that because that was like, okay, I, I, that's what drives me. That's what fuels me. And about a year, less than a year at, before I was about to graduate USC, 
get a degree and all these things. I picked up my entire life, got married and moved to India at 21 years old and moved to an ashram for two years. I gave up everything and we will maybe do more coverage on that on another episode. But some years later, when I decided to come back, I was really ready for making my own thing, right? I, I knew I needed to do that. I knew I wanted to do that. And I, at that point, felt really called to get into health and wellness, particularly Ayurvedic medicine, which is what I do and practice. And that's when my, my first baby was born. And let's, yeah, I don't know. I want to talk to you, to you guys and hear from you guys about what it felt like for you to start your first business. Like if you can take yourself yeah, back. I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want Lauren and I to share, but I also want to put a pin in the fact that you're in the process of laying that baby to rest currently. And that's sort of like the what we're teeing up for. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, yes, you're right. We are teeing up for that. We got inspired for multiple reasons to talk about this topic on the podcast today it's been a huge point of conversation with our apprentices and with ourselves this this past week and funny enough i have been going back and forth about closing my first baby my first company for quite a while actually but my brother had been working with me a lot on it and there was a possibility that he was going to take the company over Finally, we came to the resolution literally this week that we were going to actually close it and it was time and it felt complete and it felt right. And it was, it was, it was just right. And we announced the closure just a few days ago on the 20th of February. And after I announced the closure, I realized that the exact day I opened the LLC, the astrological birthday of the company was February 20th four years before the same exact day. I didn't even tell you guys that literally on the same day. I, st I founded the That's LLC profound. on February 20th, 2020. And it closed February 20th, 2024. Isn't that wild without any planning? So crazy. So yeah, we're going to talk a lot about the birth, the sustenance and the death of our business, our different business endeavors and what we have learned in, along the way as neuro spicy spiritual and female entrepreneurs so yeah let's start let's start talking about it tell me now we've put a pin in it i want to ask you guys again like what it was like for you in those first years where you had to kind of take that leap right it's such a leap of faith in so many ways on yourself on life on all of these things why it's such a spiritual process i believe to become an entrepreneur what that was like for you in those years and where you were at in that point of your of your life I think we we all, yeah, <laughs> I feel like we all kind of had similar experiences. So I feel like a lot of the listeners or watchers will probably identify with this and, and be either in this or, or have overcome this. But like for me, I was, I was forced into it. I was forced into it by my body, by mm -hmm. my emotions, by the universe. I literally yeah. could not work for someone else anymore. I couldn't work in environments that were not in alignment for me anymore. I literally m emotionally, mentally, physically could not handle it anymore Same. and, and was yeah. kicked out of the nest by the universe um, mm -hmm. and left everything that I was doing in the, as you guys know, I like to call it the muggle world, like everything I was doing in the muggle world, all the regular stuff and went straight in all the way into ownership, entrepreneurship, and it was terrifying and it was also such a relief. Yeah. Yeah. To where now it's not as scary because we've done these trust falls. They're not trust falls anymore. They're no knowing falls because we know what's going <laughs> to happen now. But in the beginning, they're very much trust falls of like, is this going to work? Does the universe got me? Can mm -hmm. I handle this? Will I be okay? You know, and, mm -hmm. and now we know like you will fail hundred percent you're gonna fail that's okay that's not the end 
And you can keep going and you can get up from that and you can come back from that and you can grow from that. And so now when I do the knowing falls, it's not as scary. It can be sometimes, but it's definitely not like it was in the beginning. It's much yeah. more of a, okay, like, let's do this. I understand the work that it's going to take. I understand the steps that it's going to take. I understand the transformation that it's going to take. And in the beginning, you have an idea, but you just can't know until you know. Hmm. Lola, until you have what, the experience, was your, so. what was your first business? Your very first business. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm trying to think. I know you've had it a was mentor. very close between. Yeah, I think it was very, I mean, as a young kid, I was selling stuff. I was like making crafts and selling stuff during the holidays and stuff like that. Um, but then I was always a hustler as like a young adult. Um, and then into adulthood, I've always had multiple jobs. I've always worked multiple places and like done multiple things. Um, but when I first started, let me see. Oh, um, it was spiritual stuff. It was spiritual stuff because I was working as a chiropractic assistant. And then I started mm -hmm. working full time as a, as a tarot reader, but that was for someone and kind of running their business. And then from there, I eventually evolved into offering healings. Okay. Um, so I was a healer first. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the next kind of big thing was, um, an apothecary. It was called Strange Brew Apothecary. It was all organic, sustainably sourced um, products. Is that your first LLC? Yes. Wellness Warrior was my first LLC. Okay. Do you still own yeah, that? Yeah, so I taught yoga and yeah, yeah, I still own it, but it's not active anymore. But yeah, okay. Wellness Warrior uh, 1. Wellness Warrior 1. Because I was mm -hmm. teaching yoga and I was offering the shamanic um, healings and that kind of stuff right after I graduated. Um, and then opened up Strength for Apothecary and was doing that for a while and then opened up the, the store Co-Create, which is a multi-use space for women creators primarily in the community. Um, and we'd host workshops and that kind of stuff. And then, and then went full, left the, both of those at the same time on the same day, Christmas. Mm -hmm. And that was when Spirit really was like, no, you're not doing anything that's not exactly what it is you're meant to be doing. And that's when I jumped full in into coaching, teaching. Mm -hmm. And that's where we really, our, our relationships really it. deepened. Yes. Mm -hmm. So true. I'm, similar to how Priscilla's entire like gifted child to Ashamite to entrepreneur, mm -hmm. how did your young parent military experience help and also hold you back like, what were those gifts and those wounds that you brought into entrepreneurialism and maybe have you know amplified or hacked away at mm -hmm. so when i graduated um i was 18 year old and six months pregnant um so i graduated and two days later got married and left my family's home into a husband and a baby and it you know, it was what you would think it would be, you know, it wasn't aligned. It wasn't, um, it wasn't healthy at all. And so from there, I kind of ran from my childhood and, and my trauma that came with that and the decisions that I made based off of those trauma responses as a young adult, et cetera, et cetera, and joined the army. Um, and that's where I really like began over identifying with the role to create a false sense of worth. Right. So that was like, the, a, a huge wound that drove a lot of my decision-making that once healed was the biggest gift that I share with my, my clients, my students, my apprentices, et cetera, as you guys know. So, so yeah, joining the military as a young mom, I had two kids. I joined at 22 and, um, I a three-year-old and a six month old and, um, got in and got into that over hyper masculine, hyper aggressive, um, reality, right. Where man, you know, like there's a lot of good in it. And then there's a lot, a lot of not good, you know? So all of that wounding and all that experience gave me the trauma, which then I <laughs> transmuted into my power and, and my gifts and the things that I'm able to share and, and hold space for people and teach people how to move through. And it also gave me, ex um, wonderful experiences around discipline and it helped me learn how to structure things for myself in order for them to work that I still use today mm -hmm. in the way that I, you know, do life 
right? It gives me structure where I had no structure before, but that was where I had my awakening was, you know, going through my PTSD and, um, you know, getting med boarded out of the military. That was when my awakening happened. And that's when I really realized like, I can't do this anymore. It was like the mini awakening to the other awakenings that happened when I was like doing my businesses, but they weren't aligned. But I was like, but I, but I'm like kind of doing it. Like, why is this not enough? So, you know, in that very beginning stages of getting out of the military and having that identity crisis of, oh shit, I'm not a soldier anymore. Well, what do I have to offer then? What is my worth? Mm -hmm. That forced me to then learn how to love myself that forced me to learn how to heal because if I wasn't, I was going down a path that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here. You know, I wouldn't be here. This is your Saturn return. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was going through my Saturn return at the time. Yeah. So, um, all of those experiences while they were incredibly like difficult as a highly sensitive person, as a neuro spicy person, feeling like an alien in a world, where I didn't, I didn't felt like I belong. I didn't have a place, but being able to still achieve at a very high, a very high, um, standard and, and being praised for that. Like that was my way of like Mm. fitting in, you know, making it, um, receiving love, feeling worth. And so all of those things, once all of those things were removed by the universe, um, those were the things that I had to heal in order to be able to be here. Mm. And so by doing that, by healing those things, being forced to heal those things, it, it put me on my path of being a healer and being a mentor, being a guide to people, um, like us who are not, they're in the world, but they're not of it, you know, like, yes, we're in it, but we're not here to be, take part in it the way it's, it is. We're meant to see it for what it can be where we truly are idealists. I do see see things at its highest potential. I do expect things at its highest potential. And so Mm -hmm. when I see there where it's not, that's where I know where to do the work. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that's what I feel has really benefited me, you know, Mm -hmm. is, is those experiences that other people would call traumatic or, or terrible. Like I'm grateful for now because I've been through some tough stuff and I am a bad bitch. I'm a strong (laughs) bitch. And I can, if I could handle that now that I'm fully healed and I love myself, like it doesn't matter. Like I've been through everything. I've had relationships fail. I've had businesses fail. I've had partnerships with friends fall out. I've had, you know, people vilify me for just doing what's right for me. And now like, Mm. now it's all water under the bridge, you know, and now I'm able to look at other people in the face and, and tell them you are, it's going to be okay. You are going to make it through this. Just, just jump or just sit with it or just whatever, you know, whatever it is, there's no one answer for anything. But after you move through that stuff, you have the wisdom and the confidence. And Mm -hmm. that helps me make the decisions that I make now moving forward in my businesses and in my personal life and, and in the way that I teach and uh, move in my path. Mm -hmm. And also it gives me the, the, I don't even know what the right word is. The the true experience to look somebody in the eye and be like, I understand. Yeah. Which is really what anybody really needs. Like we're not not <laughs> magic, right? I just know how to hold space and, and lead people how to take the steps that they need to do what it is that they do. And that's my purpose and my path. So yeah. I I really I think that I the... think you're, you're... go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I, I, everything you're sharing, sharing really reminds me of just how much what we go through, right? What we have been through. Definitely, I know individually, us three, and what so many people are going through in their lives on this journey of their awakening and their entrepreneurship, or one or the other, both, um, that it's through the experience, through the lived experience, that we get put in perspective, like this is small stuff. Like I can do this. This is small. I've been through so much worse. I've been through so much harder. I've been through so much heavier. I think about that a lot. And I think it gives us so much resilience as entrepreneurs because we have been through some really, really real life, 
real life, dark, hard things that completely unrelated to business, related to us as, as children and as individuals and things that we've been through, like create building that muscle so much for us that, yeah, it's like, I'm going to keep swimming. Nothing. I know things won't take me down. Like even when it's, when it's tough and I can't see where I'm going really, like I will keep going. We're survivors, you know? And I think the mistakes there's so people want to not fail, but there is failure is the number one, most information rich experience that you can have. Mm -hmm. Like people try to avoid failure, but when you know what you've done, that didn't work. Like that gives you so much information on what did work, what you can change, what to totally throw out and never do again, what to try next time. You know, like the reason our brain and our body is wired to like, remember those moments where we like really mess up is to use that information, yeah, not to hide from it, you right. know? So the failure, there's so much, there's so much win. There's so much value in failing. But for my gifted child, myself as well, there was never any room for failure and like success and failure was like safe or not safe in the nervous system. And I think that generally our schooling system and how we raise kids in the West is set up in such a way, right? You're not allowed to fail when you're supposed to fail a lot until you're like 30. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like your yeah, experience. Chin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you saying, oh, it's not magic. It's just uh, been through a lot. So I have that compassion. And that's true. But also there's, there's some magic in there. There's I magic. mean, yes, there's the energy of it, right? There's, there's spirit in there. There are, there's a bit of non-ordinary energy, right? But it's not like. I, I don't want people to put us on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. um, like, I'm not your guru. I'm not your savior. I am your space holder. I'm your way yeah. shower. I'm, I'm a, a leader. I'm not your, mm -hmm. oh, okay. you know, like, Mother. yeah, yeah. yeah like, like dictator, <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. Savior, mm -hmm. like you said, savior is a big one. People often want to want you to be that actually naturally it happens a lot a lot a lot and you have to go out of your way to combat that i think if you don't it just it just hap it can just happen it can just get created you know so unconsciously you know what's funny too is that can happen and also the opposite can happen where people um take it a little too far and are like, oh, we're homies. And it's like, <laughs> I mean, kind of, but also like there's a little bit of experience there. So I feel like respect is also yeah. um, important, right? Um, we talk about a lot of times, like I say it less eloquently than maybe you guys will rephrase it, but like you want the milk, but you think you're too good for the cow. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, I'm not your savior, but at the same time, don't try and play with me. Yeah. Because I've been there. I've right. seen it. Right. Um, but I think that comes with the territory as well of not being triggered by those things and just being like, you want to think about that again <laughs> before you say it? Those type of things, you know. Somebody, somebody prompt me. It's my turn. I know. I was about. I was about to tell us great. about your. You had us tell about like our transition. So let's hear about yours when you were still in the Muggle world and in that empire, and how you broke out. Yeah, similar to P, not quite as um, top notch accoladed, but you know, National Honor Society. Like, I think I graduated with like a four point three in high school. Um, I was captain of the cheer team. I led us to our first state championship for the school. Um, that's, yeah. That's, oh my that's God. cool. Uh, I had no idea. That's crazy. <laughs> really? You didn't know that? No, no I was head cheerleader my, my senior year. Okay. Uh, which is so funny because it was my first, first taste of leadership. And the coach became, like, my first mentor. Someone finally saw, like, this crazy, like, 
wacky, autistic, weird kid um, is intelligent and has leadership potential. And she was like the first person to recognize that in me and cultivate it. Um, but because, you know, you know, I was in like all the AP sciences and maths and all that, I went into uh, engineering, which both my parents and one of my step parents was an engineer. So it was kind of like just, I didn't know what to do. I actually wanted to be an English major. Um, and I'm the first born daughter of immigrant parents. So they were like, you already speak English. <laughs> Why would you go to school for English? <laughs> so, which is really funny because as you guys know, I'm like, I have the brain and the soul of an editor, right? <clears throat> like I love reading, Literally. writing, editing, uh, publishing. So yeah, I went into engineering, chemical engineering, because I loved chemistry and they told me that I could make my own cosmetics. That's how my parents like sold it to me instead of me being like, I'm going to study English. Um, so I did that for four years and it was really hard. Um, it was really hard academically to see the people next to you, like some people not have a hard time with it and be like, oh my God, like, what, where am I? Um, and so then I graduated and there was a six month gap where I was looking for a job and I got in this car accident and I like rethought my life a little bit. And I started Blissful Bohemian LLC in November, 2016, I graduated six months prior in May. And then I would two months later enter industry, um, with my first laboratory, chemical science, chemistry, blah, blah, blah mm -hmm. job. Um, so the entire time that I was in industry, I also had this baby, like from the moment that I got in, I was plotting my escape. <laughs> and I, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, even though obviously I came into money with an engineer salary at 22, 23 years old, I did not have the wisdom or the wherewithal to invest it into the business because I didn't even know where or how, like I, mm -hmm. um, I was in many ways, like naturally as a neuro spicy person just like lost on the manual of like what to do I think a lot of like people in there you are but um I never trusted conventional means uh naturally and I don't know if I would have said that during the time but looking back it's that's obvious mm -hmm. so for the, th the two three years that I was in industry which I worked from 7 45 in the morning to 5 30 at night five days a week never saw the sun in a building with no window soul crushing soul <laughs> crushing so so i mean like so 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 soul crushing because yeah we had because things were uh, i worked for a defense contractor which hello war hello contributing to war uh indirectly but directly which is so opposite of like everything that i stand for and i knew that i knew mm -hmm. that um, more and more, it rubbed me wrong as I, as I was in that position. Um, and it, it was so interesting, like having all of the accolade, being like a young, attractive female engineer, the job, the, you know, all of the elite status and like being soul sucked inside. To, like, they love having us as their poster babies. They really do. They love having us as their poster babies, these beautiful women with beautiful hearts in these positions, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. They love it. Mm -hmm. But so I never saw a son, right? And I was in, I worked in, I specialize in microelectronics, um, which actually is really, how did, how did a chem, someone chemistry based get into electronics or the electrical field? Uh, it's really chemically intensive, especially with heavy acids, that field. So I worked a lot with acids and I was in a microelectronics lab. So you can imagine the EMF exposure was just like out off the cherry, off the charts. 
and yeah, no sun, no windows, and everybody around me was so happy to be there and so proud of themselves that they were there, right? And I was just like, um, guys, this sucks. And when, actually when I quit, quite a few other people quit and there was like this whole thing, like hashtag Savannah gave me depression because I would be like, hey, do you know that you're gonna be working this job until you're dead? I would say stuff like that to people in my lab and, they, and then it would sit with them. Um, to be fair, you still kind of say stuff like that now, but it's just like in different contexts. <laughs> just like send them into existential crisis. Um, so, so the pros and the cons of all that, and then I got out of it because similar to Lauren, I physically could not take it anymore. Like unexplained illness, all my hair fell out from stress. Like I got to the point where I was like, I'm going to put in my two weeks notice or I'm going to put a bullet in my ring. Like I, I kind of cornered myself. I know it's kind of dark. Sorry. Uh, she just had a trigger warning, but <laughs> I cornered, I cornered myself like that. I was like, all right, so then I, and, and, you know, I have four younger siblings that were looking to me as example. My parents were so proud of me and I was just, I just had to be like, sorry guys, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, so I quit the job, quit the relationship I was in and decided to go full in on my business, which I still didn't know what I was doing. Blissful Bohemian started as a holistic health blog and slowly turned into, okay, now we're going to talk about mental health. And then, oh, now we're going to talk about spiritual health. And the moment that I had the guts to come out of the broom closet about January, 2020, I blew the fuck up because spirit was like, bingo, bingo. <clears throat> so since then, I mean, it's been what, four plus years since, since then, since I finally hit my stride with it. Um, I recently have gone through my Saturn return. I'm still kind of there, uh, where she unceremoniously died. Let's put a pin in that because we're we're gonna talk about like birth, life, and death of our LLCs. Um, she unceremoniously died, and I didn't realize till months after, like, oh, she died. We salvaged the carcass and started. A <laughs> we all salvaged the carcasses of our past businesses to start ancient soul gardens which is and so use those bits to make the new <laughs> we fra oh, we frankenstein <laughs> this bitch <laughs> anyway, so but anyways the pros and the cons right the pros and the cons um i have an incredible work ethic and resiliency from the degree and the work that i did um and stand there for myself I also am so aware of what muggle success looks and feels like and how empty it was for me. And I think it is for a lot mm -hmm. of people. Um, and cons, it's, it's gotta be the, the ever quest of improvement and ha not having to really, really take the time and, and consciousness to celebrate the little milestones, right? To not just sweep everything under the rug and take on the next project, to actually like celebrate the milestones and almost pat myself on the back for the things that I get done instead of like minimizing what I have done and maximizing what I haven't done. That's something that I'm still every day with. Like, like I came onto this podcast today and I was like, guys, I'm about to start my cycle. Like, I don't feel good. I'm, I'm sorry I haven't, like, gotten farther with what I wanted to this week. And it's like one year ago, today is February 22nd, March 1st, one year ago, was the first merger conversation we ever had. And our LLC wouldn't go through until August 8th. So it has been... So and we're like all the way in it now we're all the way in it we've like built the way. city and roads and government and we've built so much in that time um but you know seeing that and and recognizing it and, and really fe sitting and feeling like uh, we did that i did that yeah that's something that i still have to be so consciously aware of 
Mm-hmm. Well, I think now too, it's really amazing because before we were all operating independently, like one woman shows. And so I feel like there's a degree of healing that we've been doing over this past year together of like having other people, not necessarily to answer to, but that are here mm-hmm. that are holding us accountable, but like, we're never holding each other accountable, like in the way that we think we are being held accountable. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the way that we tend to hold ourselves accountable is like, Oh, why didn't I get anything done? Da, 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 da. And then when we bring it to each other, we're like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Like, I'm really where are you at in your cycle? Yeah. I was there two yeah. weeks ago when you were holding space for me. Do you remember when I didn't get shit done? It's fine. Mm-hmm. And I think we also, we uh, equate our, the way that we work a lot to like passing the baton, you know, like I'm, I'm usually, well, it takes when, it, when I'm, when I'm the front runner, I'm the front runner. Right. And I'm like, Choom! like, let's go guys. And like get a lot of things started. But like, as a manifester, I struggle with continuing on with the, the things that have been started. So oftentimes I get to pass the baton and, and not oftentimes every time we all, sh- we share all the responsibilities, right? It's, it's traded then to Priscilla or Savannah. So it's like, that is, I think, a thing that we've been healing that would have never been able to be healed if we weren't to work mm-hmm. with one another. Mm, totally. And I, know. I think that this, it's just, it's just wild that Savvy even bring up that we only had that conversation not even a year ago, almost a year ago today, and how much has happened since then. And I was I was realizing as you were sharing, I think it's a commonality amongst beings like us. Again, I'll use the term idealists, visionaries. I mean, quite literally in Myers Briggs, one you have NF in your center stack, you're an idealist, right? So almost our entire community falls into this category. Every one of our apprentices, every one of our students, and I have so much to say on that. Maybe we'll do a whole podcast on all of this these archetypings that we we reference a lot, right? But I think when you have this, right, the the strength of us as idealists and visionaries, we always see the, the big picture. We can see ahead. We can see a future that no one else can see. We can see ideas that aren't created yet. We can see things that don't exist yet in the in the material world. We're a lot of times zoomed out. So for us, it actually can be harder to zoom in, to actually zoom in and to, to, to like be, oh my God, I, yeah, what did I do this week? Look at everything I just did this last month. Like I, it's so hard for us to even go there. And I think that that's where our expansion lies. And it's so great that now we also have the nourishing support of each other, which makes it so much easier to see our blind spots because we get to say it to each other, right? From the outside, everything is so much clearer. So when I watch Sam yeah. Lauren, right, in your energy yeah. and in your work, it's so clear to me everything you've done and your strengths and what you've brought to the table. It's sometimes harder, of course, for me to see that in myself. And you guys get to like reflect that to me. So it's 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 a beautiful expansion mm-hmm. for us at this stage of our entrepreneurship, for sure. Let's talk about I mentioned us taking the pieces of our businesses that we've laid to rest mm-hmm. and bringing them into ancient soul gardens. Yeah. What a gift and revival to be able to do that. And yeah. it's, let me make this statement. It is natural and normal for things to have a life and death, including businesses. I never thought that Bliss will be Union would die or be murdered. <laughs> <laughs> I never it's now still my alias but I don't operate under that LLC or branding anymore but everything that I built underneath it was able to come into fit you guys' puzzle pieces as we merged into ancient soul gardens mm-hmm. you know like exactly. we, can, we can even like mention like okay Priscilla brought ABC Lauren brought XYZ Savannah brought one two three and like <laughs> they all fit together Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. perfectly it's kind of crazy it's it's, yeah. it's actually really crazy yeah. we talk about it a lot amongst ourselves how crazy it is that like we're so compatible as business partners and we're best friends and that's pretty crazy and we really really rarely rarely have issues especially I mean in our work almost never 
ever, ever, ever do mm-hmm. we have, which is incredible. <clears throat> We're very blessed. And I feel like that's a huge part of why I feel so deeply in my bones that this is so much bigger than us that it is Mm -hmm. uh, we were we were put here and this was given this was a gift you know we we connected because of this and we connected because of something bigger than we can even fully see right now or feel right now and sav as you're mentioning the natural life cycle of business right the truth is when you're starting something and this is beautiful for all the like newer entrepreneurs listening when you're starting something you shouldn't see the death. Like that's not the stage that you're in. You don't need to visualize Mm -hmm. that. You don't need to think about it. Actually quite the opposite. You need to be birthing it. You need to be growing it. You need to be nurturing it. And therefore, of course, your energy and your attention is that that's the energy you're, you're in the creation and the sustenance mode, but somewhere along the line, it can happen. Not always, but it can often happen that as you exponentially change and grow and expand, your business was more connected to an older version of you. And as you move, yes. oh, your, business, yes. your, your business moves though. That's it's so true because it is you, you know, it is and it isn't right. There's things you have to, of course, learn not to make personal, which is a very important part of the process. Sam always talks to us about that, but it is yeah. energetically, right? <clears throat> it's obviously going to be a mirror and extension of you. When I, When I started Ananda Ayurveda, to circle back in our closing conversation, right? When I, when I started Ananda Ayurveda, I started that my life, it's crazy that it was only four years ago. To me, that was like two decades ago in my soul. It was two full decades I've lived since, if not more, since that period of my life, I was a baby in so many ways. I had just come back to the United States. I was super humbled, had everything taken away, like Lauren was mentioning that she experienced too, right? Where it's like, okay, and now what? Like, I had no money. I had no career. I had no home. I was coming back to a country with my husband who I was providing for financially and otherwise. And I started this company alongside my ex and we created it together. It was my baby, but he helped me with many, many things. And the energy was a whole different phase of my life where I was into intimately connected to the old Sangha and ashram that I used to be a part of. I was literally married. I was infantile in my career. I thought I would just be doing Ayurveda consults forever. Like that was, I was, you know, I was like, I'll be, I, I'm in Ayurvedic medicine. I'm getting certified and I'm going to be taking patients for the rest. You know, that's like, that's what I want to do. And look how much me, every part of my life and my dharma has evolved alongside me over four years. So the closure of this company Mm -hmm. has so much to do with that. And I I just want to mention, because so many people have been asking me, like, why are you closing it? No, no, no. Like, it's not a bad thing. It's actually such a beautiful thing. I'm not closing it by force, might I add. I don't have to close it. I am choosing to close it because I have learned as a entrepreneur who has now experienced success over some years that when I diverge my energy too much and split it in too many places, it does not serve. It does not serve that thing. And it does not serve me, especially when it's something that is trying to say, Hey, like, let me go, let me go. And I've been hearing, you know, my company say that for me to me for maybe two years, actually, to be quite honest, like one to two years. You know, and I tried to make a lot of different changes to see, hey, can I change this and keep it going? Can I bring this factor in and keep it going? Can I make it new? Right. Like, so I was I was flowing with that for some time. And now it's like we're at a point where it's ready to be released from the nest, you know, and it's it's made a beautiful Mm -hmm. impact and it's helped a lot of people in their health. And it was beautiful to grow for my growth as an individual and my growth as a boss and a leader and an entrepreneur and. I'm ready, you know, I'm ready to release it. I want to release it because who who I am and what I'm creating now is from a different space. Honestly, it's from a different energy and I want to bring that energy into the world right now, you know, and I want to let that part of my story and me also close its chapter, you know? 
Yeah. 100. We have the mm, apprentices yeah. right now doing the final rebrandings of anything that we've brought in that was branded for like our previous businesses, switching all those little details, those little logos mm -hmm. and such to Ancient Soul Gardens. And it feels good. I'm, I'm so happy and like in many ways, very grateful um, for the death of the things that needed to die for the new things to be born. Mm -hmm. It's creating the, the, the fertilizer, you know, like it builds the fertilizer of the soil for the flower, the new like garden to grow. Hey, the new garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey. Natural. Natural. Um, yeah, I've come I've come to enjoy the death and rebirth at this point. It's it's fun. Yeah. I get too bored. Yeah. <laughs> I hear I hear that. I hear that. You do, you get you get really uh, uh all right. You get a different relationship with it, right? As you get intimacy with it that's the truth we have intimacy with death in mm -hmm. so many ways as healers oh. as entrepreneurs yeah. we have a lot of intimacy with death so cheers to that ladies oh. death doulas. yeah literal death doulas. Cool. <laughs> all right my love all right my love this was awesome i can't wait till next time so the yeah. moral of the story is you always will have something good to, to carry on almost like an artifact or an heirloom from the things that die in your life. So take the good and shed the, what is meant to be put into the ground. Know that it is fertilizing the soil for what's next. Mm -hmm. and what's for you will continue. What's not will be released. So let it, you know, let go or be dragged. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. Let it be, baby. Either way, we'll be sipping tea watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody see you on the next episode we love you make sure to subscribe to the podcast Bye, guys. and subscribe to the youtube channel Bye.